Hello, everyone. Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We come today to Ezra chapter 4, so open up your Bible to chapter 4, verse 1. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And chapter 4, verse 1 says, When Mordecai learned all that had happened, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city. He cried out with a loud and bitter cry. Now remember, Mordecai was a cousin of the queen, Queen Esther. And he raised her like she was his own daughter. They were Jewish. And now Mordecai finds out that the, the entire Jewish race is scheduled to be wiped out by the king's um, prime minister, whose name was Haman. And this was an overreaction to the fact that Mordecai did the right thing and wouldn't bow before Haman. He would reserve his reverence for God and God alone. So, but now Mordecai finds out that his refusal to bow has resulted in a death sentence for all the Jews in the entire land. You know, it's one thing to suffer the consequences of righteousness and the persecution for righteousness sake yourself, but then to see uh, other people who aren't even involved suffer as a result of your righteousness, that makes it even tougher. I mean, not that he did the wrong thing. He did the right thing, and he must continue to refuse to bow. Um, but still, it'd be rough. Verse 2. And verse 2 says, He went as far as the front of the king's gate, for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. You, the king did not want anything that even resembled sadness in his presence. And so Mordecai is completely sad, um, covered with mourning clothes, sackcloth, has ashes on his head, all signs of mourning. So he wouldn't come before the king, even though he may want to go there and plead for mercy himself. Verse 3, And in every province where the king's command and decree arrived, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And so they were all doing it, just exactly what Mordecai was doing, mourning the fact that they've got a death sentence. You know, the king may not like sadness, but you reap what you sow, and he's going to be in the presence of a whole lot of sadness because of his knee-jerk decision to follow the the uh, suggestion of Mordecai and have an entire race put to death for no good reason. Verse 4, So Esther's maids and eunuchs came and told her, and the queen was deeply distressed. Then she sent garments to clothe Mordecai and to take his sackcloth away from him, but he would not accept them. Now, he's not going to dress up. He's sad and and he's not going to cover it up with some phony smile. Verse 5, Then Esther called Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, whom he had appointed to attend her. And she gave him a command concerning Mordecai to learn what and why this was. Well, the Mordecai would not come into the palace because uh, he was sad. He couldn't. And he wouldn't change his clothes and take off the mourning clothes and wash his face, put a smile on his face. He wouldn't do that either, so the queen sent somebody out to talk to him. Verse 6, so Hathak went out to Mordecai in the city square that was in front of the king's gate. And Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasury to destroy the Jews. He also gave him a copy of the written decree for their destruction which was given at Shushan, that he might show, to, show it to Esther and explain it to her, and that he might command her to go in to the king to make supplication to him and plead before him and for her people. So Mordecai, through this mediator, is filling Esther in on the situation with all the Jews in the land, and who's responsible for it too, and it's Haman. You know, the queen always obeyed Mordecai when she was growing up, and he's hoping that she will obey him here, too, when he asks her to go and plead with the king 
to somehow put a stop to this madness. Verse 9, So Hathak returned and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and gave him a command for Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that any man or woman who goes into the inner court to the king who has not been called, he has but one law, put all to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter that he may live. Yet I myself have not been called to go into the king these 30 days. So Esther's a little leery about barging into the king and, um, and pleading with him because she has not been summoned. No one went into the king's presence without an invitation, and that would include the queen. And the usual penalty for barging into the king's presence would be death. So she tells Mordecai, we got a problem here. I haven't been summoned. So Mordecai, in essence, is asking Esther to risk his life or risk her life. Um, and, of course, a dead queen won't do anyone any good, and that's what she is suggesting. Verse 13, And Mordecai told them to answer Esther, Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. In other words, Esther, you don't want to get, you don't want to, you don't want to be executed for barging into the king's presence, but I got news for you, you're a Jew. And this decree signed by the king is to kill all the Jews, and that would include you, even though you're the queen. So you're not going to escape by ignoring this problem. You can't ignore this problem, you know. You're the only one who can who can possibly stop it from happening. And God may have put you in that position to do that. And, of course, he did. It's no accident that she was there at this particular time. There's no accident that you are where you are either at this particular time. Verse 15, And Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. In other words, she says, I'll do it. I guess our backs are up against the wall. I'll do it, but I want you to cover all spiritual bases, Mordecai. Have everybody fast. Have all the Jews that you know fast for me. And, of course, fasting is a nonverbal prayer, a very powerful prayer, and um, she'll do the will of God, but she wants him to, Mordecai and the rest of the Jews, to pray about it, pray for God's blessings on her. Verse 17, so Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. And, of course, he would because he was a man of God and he believed in prayer. And he's asking Esther to do something very difficult, very dangerous, the least he can do is pray for her and ask others to pray for her as well. Maybe... You're not in a position to do something that needs to be done for the Lord, but you can pray for those who are in that position and who are called by God to do it. That way we all have a part in the work of God, an equally important part, by the way. Well, we'll pick it up in chapter 5 next time. You want to be a part of this ministry? That would be great. Your prayers and financial support are greatly appreciated. Our address is Scripture Verse by Verse, Post Office Box 2211, Wausau, Wisconsin, 54402-2211. That's Scripture Verse by Verse, Post Office Box 2211, Wausau, Wisconsin, 54402-2211. Check out the Scripture Verse by Verse website. That can be found at thebibleversebyverse.com. That's the Bible Verse by Verse. Dot com. You can study the whole Bible online using my audio Bible commentaries, Genesis through Revelation, every verse of the Bible. Again, the Bible, verse by verse dot com. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.